Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting, hitting you up with another tutorial. The Eldar Crimson Flyer. A lot of you guys really like this uh, final picture that I posted on the internet a little while ago. I'm finally to it in my queue of tutorials. It was really fun to paint. The colors are really excited. Uh, I am really happy to show this to you guys. I'm really proud of this model. So please take a look at it and tell me how you guys feel about it. Let me see, get some good feedback, check out the comments. You know, let me talk real quick. I got a lot of things happening. TheLongWar.net, www.TheLongWar.net. Please jump over there. And if you're already on there watching this video, thank you. In the meantime, let me do a couple of shout outs. Got a couple of patrons that need talking about. Um, Adam, thank you player. Thank you for all the drinks that you bought me last time I saw you. Also, Michael, thanks. Without any further ado, let's jump right into the tutorial. All right, guys, let's do this thing. We're gonna start with a custom color. Um, I think I mixed a little Signar Blue from Privateer Press in with uh, Royal Purple from Vallejo. Not an airbrush, neither are airbrush colors. Straight up Vallejo game color. So I'm trying to create a really deep, dark purple that has a lot of like hints of blue in it. I find that you really make colors exciting when you do that. Uh, privateer press blues are my heat for doing this you can see I'm just blasting it on um, got it down by my vents uh, trying to suck in the excess air uh, and, and, and paint since I'm basically wide open with the airbrush right now and I'm gonna be painting three of these in this video so I'm gonna try to start showing you guys how to be consistent like not just paint this one model really nice how do you paint three of them really nice so this video is a little long because I am going to try to show you that whole process. So we're painting three Crimson Hunters right now with this special mix. Open the PSI up as high as it goes. Back the needle out like a little bit, like an eighth of an inch. Get your mask on. Get your vents operational because this is going to spray a lot of things you don't want to breathe into your lungs into the air. It's really bad for you to breathe this this like when you're when you're going wide open like this it's bad for you um so make sure you have a mask and make sure you have a vent for for this kind of lay down process don't want anyone getting the black lung you can see the colors coming out really deep uh it's kind of flat right now uh but it does have depth you know like i don't know that, that might be redundant to say uh it's it's gonna pop here soon but i do i do enjoy this this really dark color I like creating exciting mixes and I'm always thinking about things like that because with the airbrush, you get an opportunity to do some unique stuff. You don't get to do this with the paintbrush. <laughs> um, here's the third one. We're going to lay down the, lay down the same color on the third one. Same kind of thing. I'll take this opportunity, you know, to talk more about uh, your responsibility as an airbrush artist. You can't, you've got to be extraordinary. You can't just be doing the same old, same old you were doing with the paintbrush. You gotta come up with exciting ways to bring color to life. How to bring your models to life. Sit down, think about what you're trying to do with the colors and practice it. Like I literally practice some of my colors on just like a piece of paper. And like, I'm like, let me see how these colors blend together. You know, let me, let me do this, let me do that. Like, I mean, practice on an index card, which is water for a while. There's a lot of things you can do to get your, your airbrush right. Um, one of my favorite things to do is, like I said, just to practice with water, get my control, get my flow right. Because I like to use a lot of PSI to push these paints to the airbrush. And so that means I'm going wide open with air and then creeping paints in with a double action. It takes a little bit of practice to get good at, but once you do get good at it, you will be a better airbrush artist than you were before. Uh, I'll tell you, with all that practice, one of the things I learned is I rarely like to mix white in the, in the colors, but, uh, but I will mix a white in with a blue at the end or pink at the end. 
never a green, never a red, etc. You know. So I did I did learn a lot of things with my own exploratory research. Okay, guys, we're gonna go with the first highlight color. I'm using I think a pure unadulterated amethyst purple. This might be a reaper piece. Well, I'm going deep, man. I'm finding all the colors. So this amethyst purple, I'm gonna use to bring out the points. I'm gonna bring in the edges, but mainly those really sharp points. Um, you're gonna wanna keep the flow right here. You're gonna wanna keep the right amount of water inside your airbrush. You're gonna want to take breaks and make sure that your tip is not getting clogged because you need to create a very clean transition. No speckles. Speckles start when you start getting dry paint on the tip. It starts disrupting the flow of paint around the needle and breaking it up and making it not smooth. So you, whenever, whenever you see that might be starting to happen, you gotta stop, clean the tip. Use a little toothbrush, a little bit of solvent, and I keep it handy and I just kinda clean the tip. I'll even show you here later on in this video what I mean by that. So come in, paint these edges, paint these tips, try to create an exciting, um, explosive contrast but you're trying to be subtle at this stage. We're only going one or two values down from our base color. You want to be slow and methodical with the transition and then pop it out at the end. That's how you create natural, beautiful transitions with no spin. That's how, that's how you get that pop. You've seen me do it in a couple other things. I did it on the, on the uh, Warhound Titan. I've done it on some of those uh, green models in the past. So I'm just trying to bring that to you guys here on this Crimson Hunter. Let's move on to the next stage. Um, oh, that was pretty interesting. You saw me mixing some of the paint inside the pot. I was just stirring it around, trying to make sure there wasn't any chunks in the bottom. Sometimes the paint gets kind of old and chunks get in the bottom of the airbrush and disrupt the flow. Easy way to solve that problem is to dip a paintbrush in there and swirl it around and see if you can't pull those chunks out. I do it all the time just to be sure. This is the other, you know, I'm just, like I said, I'm showing you here in the beginning of this series, the grind. I'm literally doing the same thing three times in a row for you guys, because I'm painting three Crimson Hunters at once. I will begin to accelerate this to not be boring, but I really wanted to reiterate, you've got to do the same thing every time, you've got to be consistent. Don't take a big ass break and come back to it, you won't be consistent. Sit down, get it done right now, paint all three of them. Whatever you're about to do, if you're about to paint the first highlight, you paint all three of them, you don't stop. Take a break after that in between stages, but don't take a break when you're in a stage. It will create inconsistent practice. There's nothing you can do about it. Sit down, get it done, put your headphones on, listen to your music or your audio books, whatever you do. I like to listen to dubstep when I'm airbrush. Okay, here's the next stage. I'm coming in with magenta. I'm going to subtly start fading magenta from the game air uh, Vallejo line into that amethyst. And you can see um, that I was trying to control my, my backflow there. If you cover the tip of your airbrush up like with your finger and blow some air through it, it'll kind of percolate in the pot and mix things up and, start, and blow some of uh, the chunky paint out of the pot. It's a little trick that I picked up on. Do it. Uh, Practice it a little while, uh, you'll see what I mean. It helps you unclog the airbrush and get it going again. Also, use the right amount of paint. I mean, the right amount of paint a lot. If you're having trouble getting your paint through the brush, a lot of times a little bit of water will solve that problem. Just a little bit. And all I do is use pure water and never use any alcohol. Alcohol is the, is the enemy. It will make the airbrush paint dry faster in the nozzle, creating that speckle thing I was talking about. We're trying to avoid that at all costs. You can see that the magenta on top of the amethyst is looking sharp. I'm very excited about this color. I did practice it on a napkin though. Uh, so I knew, I didn't know ahead of time what it was going to look like. But I am very happy with the product so far. Okay, now I'm gonna start accelerating the tutorial. We're going with a little white mixed in with a little magenta. 50-50, Vallejo air colors, of course. This is where you want to be very methodical, very subtle. Don't, don't go crazy here. You gotta be super subtle, because once you start entering white into the equation, the speckling is real. Now, I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you guys right here. 
I just have a paintbrush, I mean, a, a, a toothbrush ready to go. I just clean the tip off. I've been doing that the entire video, but I've been cutting them out to try to make the video faster. I left that one in for you guys to see what I mean. I have it right there on my lap. Every couple of sprays, I go in, clean it off before it happens. It's annoying, but it will, but it's less annoying than ruining a subtle transition with a bunch of speckled ass white. White is tricky, but white can be your friend. So be methodical here, be subtle. Drop the white off on all the models. This is a 50-50 blend. We're still gonna go pure white. Not sure. I haven't um, looked at this video in a while. I'm really busy doing some of the longwar.net things. In the meantime, don't, don't hesitate to check out the longwar.net. So you can see that we're bringing those points in. They're very sharp, they're very exciting, they're electric. This is how I like to utilize the image. I like to go beyond reality. Paintbrush could never do this. So now, I think I'm on the third Crimson Hunter, dropping in the uh, highlights. I might be dropping the pure white. I can't quite tell from the video, I'm sorry. Um, now here it is. We're going pure white now. Very subtle. Don't wipe out anything. Just add it to the very end of those sharp points. The very tips. Very subtle, I'm talking 80% air, 20% paint. Sorry, check that. 90, 10. Talking, it's almost all air. You're going in with the most subtle transition possible. Very, very clean, very slow. Here, I'm gonna show you the process three more times. Pure white, burning out those points, making it almost look like it's glowing in the dark. That is the extreme effect I'm trying to go for on this Crimson Hunter. There, it's just one of my favorite ways to use it, utilize the airbrush. Uh, we're almost done. Just dropping those final highlights off on all the models. Very clean, very methodical, and I am I am showing you the grind. I'm going through every single one of them so you guys can see it more than once, more than once. You know, just gotta keep going with it. The next tutorial, I'll accelerate it a little bit. Uh, we will be doing some of the edge highlighting. Because when you do this effect, you have to go in and do some edge highlighting. You have to hit some of those weird lines. It will, for just about, for another hour of work on each one of the Crimson Hunters, you will augment the paint job tenfold. It is worth it. It's what I talk about. The airbrush has saved us a buttload of time here in the front of the project. You don't sit there and be, you know, don't go in and be wasteful of that time and say, hey, I got it done an hour early. No, you take that hour, put it back in the highlighting process, put it back in on the back end. Use the hour so that you get more done in five hours. Don't say, oh, I did it in three hours and it looks okay. No, the amount of work you were able to do in five hours will be beyond what you could have possibly done before. So we're, I mean, we're coming up to the tail end of this video and you can see that, I mean, I came back in with a little bit more white, pure, pure white, and I'm just dropping one more of this perfect highlight. I want this thing to be perfect. I want it to look amazing. I, I just, you know, I've saved so much time, like I said, that I'm just gonna use it. I'm gonna go in. I said, I'm gonna paint these three flyers. I'm gonna paint them in three days. I'm gonna use every bit of those three days. And here it is. I mean, it looks fantastic. If I don't, I don't mind saying that it looks amazing and I love that. Anyway, I'll hit you guys up on the flip side. There it is, guys. Crimson Hunter. That was fun. That's part one. I think I'm going to take two, maybe three parts on this one. It is a really extensive tutorial. Thank you guys for checking it out. Also, please don't forget, I have a Twitter page and an Instagram page, and a blog. Check out those things. The links are always in the description box. And also, thank you for checking out the longwar.net. Thanks for watching, players. Yo, dog. Thanks for checking out my channel. And don't forget, I've got plenty of other tutorials, tips and tactics, and many more. Also, if you get a chance, check out my best friend Robbie B's channel, Spiky Bits. He's got tons of sick videos dropping. Thanks for watching.